Hi everyone, I'm Ralph and I like music and blinking lights. So here it is, the mystery synth that I fetched in my mystery pickup video and that I had won in an auction. You may notice a distinct lack of enthusiasm in my voice. Well, there are three reasons for that. First, I didn't actually intend to buy this synth. It was never really on top of my list. Aspen Croft, who's just got one too and who's my go-to guy in these matters, apparently likes it. So does Katsunori-san. Then why did I bid for it? Well, I didn't. Or rather, technically I did, but I didn't expect to win it, to be honest. As a matter of fact, I won it as the second bidder, which usually spells accident in capital letters. Now I do remember having played it a couple of times when I was young. And I knew that it was the successor of the Poly6 that I liked very much. Supposed successor, I guess. I didn't really like it then, and in all honesty, don't really like it now. It manages to offer a user interface even worse than other synths of that era. I do remember one bit of trivia quite vividly about the synth though. When the award-winning French composer Francis Le wrote the title melody for the German cruise ship themed TV series Das Traumschiff, there was a brief segment about him on TV where he was seen playing a Poly 61 that he had custom made with an accordion style keyboard. That image kind of stuck in my memory. The second reason is that I had to fetch it from out in the sticks. When I bid for instruments, I take into consideration that I may have to fetch it in person instead of it being delivered by post. So I usually want to know beforehand what I'm getting myself into, i.e. if and how I can get to the place, just in case, if possible with public transportation. Now, luckily in this case, public transport was never further away than two or three minutes of walk. Apart from the last leg, where I got a lift by my better half, I hauled the synth using public transport only. That was reason two. But the last and most severe reason is that I bought the synth as defective. I tend not to buy gear that is defective. Sometimes the seller is unable to test it and offers it as defective, but in this case the defect was obvious. Only four out of the six voices worked. Also, there had been a battery leak in the past with considerable corrosion resulting from it on the PCB. As a matter of fun fact, battery leaks are so common with the Poly6 and the Poly61 that if you google repair and Poly6 or Poly61, a battery leak as the cause of the failure is just silently uh, presupposed. On the picture supplied by the seller, there was one visible botch to bridge a corroded trace. Um, in any case, my reasoning was that if the defect happened to be on the analog side, I'd have four working analog voices to compare the faulty ones with. But I considered a failure on the analog side unlikely. Why would two voices fail at the same time and why adjacent ones? So I guessed the failure to be on the digital side, quite likely close to the physical region where the battery leak had happened. Cosmetically, it's in excellent shape, it just doesn't work properly. Now, of course, I'm not an expert in electronics, but I thought I'd have a go at repairing it anyway. Uh, it did set me back a little though, when the seller told me that he was an electrical engineer and that he didn't manage to fix it. So, here's the synth. When uh, poking around aimlessly in the intestines of the synth in preparation of this video, I actually managed to fix it in a rather surprising way, temporarily. Indeed, I had already finished most of the script to this video about the mysterious way that I was able to fix it when it started failing again. The nature of the fix that I'm going to describe in a second meant that the fix wasn't going to last. 
Still, that it would fail so soon was rather unexpected. The good thing though is that I don't have to fake the error now, but can show real footage. Also, I will demonstrate live on camera how I had likely fixed it the first time round. Here's how the defect manifests itself. Only 4 out of 6 notes keyed play a sound. The same is true with arpeggios. Note the two rests where there should be notes. So here's what I found when I opened the synth. Lots of stuff. Where do you even start? I had downloaded and started studying the service manual even before the auction had ended. I tried to guess a probable cause of the failure using little more than the schematics and my little grey cells. I needed to find something that's different for voices 5 and 6 as opposed to the rest. Uh, it didn't help much, so I started poking aimlessly at various points in the synth. Not because I expected to find a fault, but because at least there was something to poke at. While testing, I noticed a cool feature. On each analog voice there's a diode that, while looking like an ordinary diode, also emitted light when the voice was active. Almost like a kind of light emitting diode. The diodes lit up for all voices, except for 5 and 6. To all of you this probably would have meant something, to me it didn't. So I probed. I checked the output of the counter chips that implement the digital oscillators, especially the pins for voices 5 and 6. I found that the frequency of voice 5 actually changed when I played different keys. So my aimless poking proved to be helpful after all. It appeared that the signal path from the keyboard to the oscillators worked. Next step would be the gates. From the schematics you can see that the gates are implemented by two quad flip-flop chips that hold the gate as long as the keys are pressed. One chip implements the gates for voices 1 to 4 and a different one for voices 5 and 6. Now where have I heard that one before? So I checked the output of the second flip-flop chip. First I check the output for voice 2, which is the most accessible on the first chip, to establish what a gate signal was supposed to look like. Then I check the pin for voice 5. No signal. Same for voice 6. No signal either. Was it a broken flip-flop chip? To prove the failure, you have to show that it is both necessary and sufficient to explain the defect. I had just done one. Or the other, I never know which is which. If the chip worked, would the remainder of the signal path work as expected? In order to force a gate signal, I took a 1k resistor and shorted the output of the flip-flop to 5 volts. Lo and behold, I got a tone. I did the same with the pin for voice 6 and again got a tone. This time, I saw in the corner of my eye that the diode that also lights up, lit up. It was a broken flip-flop after all. Alright then, all that was needed to fix the synth was a quad flip-flop chip worth 30 cents. Hooray, that was quick. I turned off the synth and went downstairs for the weekend drinks and nibbles. Then I wondered, how can a chip fail? Of course it's not impossible for ICs to fail, they just don't. I reckoned that there were three possible points of failure. A faulty connection of the reset pin, forcing the output permanently low. A faulty connection of the data lines, preventing the flip-flop from being written. A faulty latch pin, also preventing the flip-flop from being written. I tested all of them. Now. While doing so, I sometimes slip with the probe and accidentally short pins, which may do harm to the synth. 
I usually play a few keys to see if all still works. And while doing so I noticed that the fault had gone away. All notes worked and all diodes lit up. I presume a pin had somehow gone loose in the solder joint and while poking with the probe I may have pushed it back into it. I noticed the solder to be quite soft as evidenced by a small but quite visible dent that I was able to do with the probe on a solder joint. Anyway, to test that proposition I will do the same fix again right now live on camera. Boom! Fixed! Is that a miracle or is that a miracle? You decide. In any case, I intend to take the PCB out, give it a proper cleaning to remove whatever still remains from the battery leakage, replace a corroded resistor and then reflow the solder joints of the two chips that I suspect of having caused the failure. Also there are a few bouncy switches that need replacing. Furthermore I want to do a proper MIDI mod so I can play the synth through MIDI and also change the parameters in a more humane way. But that's for another video. I'm sorry that there is no real repair to report on, but I'm quite happy to have a working synth. However, I got it to work again. With that being said, as always, thanks for watching and don't forget to like if you did, share and subscribe for more music and blinking lights. Tschüss zusammen!